Right. Am I back on the air again? Hopefully. Yeah, someone up, uh, someone fucking upstairs was um, messing around with the router. Um, so the internet dropped there, I'm afraid. <sighs> Apologise for that. <sighs> Took the opportunity to go grab some more food, so... <laughs> I'm actually going to, um, I'm, I'm going to call a food break, um, grab, but before I do, I'm going to check PayPal, see how much we've got so far, um, ah, time left, <laughs> retirement, <laughs> 18 hours, eh? Right, yes. Ugh. I've complained about this before, but I don't know, it's just stupid people that I live with. I mean, I like my housemates, honestly. Like, you, there are much worse housemates you could possibly end up with, but they don't seem to grasp the basic concept that if everyone else's computer is working fine and connected to the internet and yours isn't, the problem isn't with the router, it's with your computer. R rhyming poetry stuff anyway um you need to go buy a new network adapter not disrupt everyone else's connection <sighs> okay let's let's see how much we got how much we go oh, yes i need to log back in We are officially, guys, up to five hundred and ten pounds fifty-two pennies. Bloody hell! That's impressive. Crime, blimey, O'Reilly. Um, that's that's a lot of money. <laughs> Holy crap! Well, thank you, everyone. Seriously. Whew. It's nuts. Like the amount of the money some people are donating is insane. By the way. Uh. Not gonna give out any names or numbers, but wow, I'm just I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say. Christ. Um. <laughs> Did you have to do anything special to record Kaiser Reich? Because whenever I try it with Fraps or Open Broadcaster, it records the sound with a black screen instead of video. Well, that's weird. I didn't. I know. I've never had that problem. I mean, I use DX Tori um, not, rather than OBS or Fraps. So there's that, but yeah, I can't remember Cole ever having that problem. I'd say maybe there's a problem with your option settings, like video-wise, but like Darkest Hour slash Kaiserreich doesn't have any bloody option settings in terms of display, does it? Um, that is odd. That is very odd. I don't think I can help you there, I'm afraid. I really don't know why that's happening for you. Coin for an old beggar, yeah. <laughs> oh. Right, what's the highest amount some, um, someone donated? Um, the highest amount, I believe. Can I sort it by amount? No. Um, was... Eighty four pounds. Yeah. It's pretty crazy.
I mean, I'm not complaining, but it's, uh, that's a lot of money. <laughs> wow. Thanks. That's all I can say, really. Thank you so much. All <sighs> uh, right. Anyway, I'm I'm gonna go for my food break. I'll be back momentarily.
Hello, everybody, I'm back. Now, we interrupt this broadcast to bring you something which is for all the people who uh, whose comments I wish I could monetize, who on my Dragon Age videos repeatedly say, Oh my god, what have you done to Morrigan's face? Alright, alright, alright. Basically, right, I've explained this plenty of times before, but... Those face mods are supposed for installed for a very specific reason. They are supposed to make the characters look like their original uh, interpretations, the way they looked in the original trailer for Dragon Age, called Sacred Ashes, which apparently not a lot of people have seen. So, I'm going to show you the trailer for Sacred Ashes for all of you out there who are. Constantly moaning about the way Morrigan looks, and I, I think she just looks way better than in the original game, but fine, personal preference is personal preference. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make you watch this now. Uh, if I can... There we go. Enjoy, it's pretty... Oh, fuck off, annotations. Oh... This trailer's really ancient, I think, actually. It came out ages ago, so... But it's pretty cool. It's all CGI and everything. Keep moving. The legend says the tomb sits atop this peak. <sighs> Lovely. We can freeze to death while digging for the bones of a madwoman. Thank <laughs> you. 
So there you go. That's what the game originally looked like when they did the trailers for it. <clears throat> Imagine my disappointment when I finally got the game and it looked rubbish. I mean, I love Dragon Age, but I've said many times before, the way the armor looks in that game, the enemies, all that kind of shit, looks really kind of crappy. And yeah, so half the characters in there, I had mods installed not long after Dragon Age was friggin' released, to be honest with you, that made them look like they did in that trailer, because I thought they all looked way cooler in that trailer. So... There you go, basically. For those of you who hadn't seen that... Anyway... <laughs> Let's get back to what we were doing. Which was looting boxes, apparently. Seems so mundane by comparison. Oh uh, well. Rusted Dwemer cabinet with a coin in it! Yes! Yes! Coins! Land's Blood Gallery, Lock 32. Um, I like the, dra the the designs in Dragon Age 2. Uh, people love to shit on that game, but, you know, okay, fine, it had its problems, but I still enjoyed it. And I thought, actually, the art direction in that game, like the designs, way better than the first game. So, so much better. Um, ooh, hang on. I think I made a Levitate potion, didn't I? Please tell me I did. Did I sell it? Alright, was I an idiot and sold it? I sold it, didn't I? Oh, oh no! Oh well. There's no way I'm jumping across that. I'm just going to die. What have you missed? You've just missed me jumping around in Morrowind, basically. We're playing as... Uh, Danzor, the Argonian swamp merchant, with a Calabian fur helm, who is currently searching around Argonthan for a puzzle box. centrifuge again. Mm. It's high time I set up some hotkeys. Uh, let's see. One can be the axe. Eight can be my torch. There we go. Run Woo! Yeah. There we go. Execution! Oh, yeah. Ouch! Oh crap, 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 crap. Uh, don't die. Thank you. Phew. Alright, yeah, this one's trapped. Come on. Sometime today would be nice, come on. There we go. No one can 
not paying attention to my health bar. Wow. Haven't I just missed that one? I'm confused now. Coin. Yeah, we have been here, right? Okay. I was just a dumbass and missed a bunch of stuff. Fine. Yeah, there's a mod that gets rid of the hit and miss thing, but it doesn't work for enemies. Well, I know it works for NPCs, but it doesn't work for creatures. So basically, so long as you're fighting a creature and not an NPC with that mod, you're basically in cheat mode. Because you automatically hit every single time, and they can't automatically hit you every single time. So. And as I've said before, the whole swing miss, swing miss thing is largely mitigated once you actually get some skill with the weapon. I only have. Um, 34 axe skill, that's crappy. That's really bad. You know, I should be swinging and missing. Where are you again? There we go. Take that. And I'm going to walk because I need the fatigue. God, you have such a weird walk. Danzo. Such a weird walk. Looks like he's doing crunches, it's weird. Old centrifuge again. Ah, right, that was the rock fall. And, ah. Yeah. I just ignore the trap door this time. Right. No, Round two. Off. There we go. Right. What do we got? Coins. Hammer, which I'm going to use right away. Uh, lockpick. Uh, a bunch of cogs and things which are way too heavy. A bucket. Uh, pipes. Yeah, nothing that interesting actually. Oh, that's a shame. You died for nothing. Hall of centrifuges, then. Right now, then. We need a 
go up here. What time is it? 2 p.m. Old Dwemer's stove. See, this is something I really liked about the Morrowind, and Skyrim as well, actually, for that matter. Oh, uh, hello. Dwarven Spear! Awesome! Um, the dungeons in this game, they actually feel like they have a purpose, or had a purpose. You know what I mean? Like, they look lived in. They have tables, they have chairs, they have cupboards, they have cabinets. You know. They have friggin' stoves. You know, this looks like a place the Dwemer used to live in. Um, you know? Whereas the dungeons in Oblivion, like, people are constantly going about how they the dungeons in Oblivion were way better than the ones in Skyrim, but I'm sorry, no they weren't. They were really lazily, boringly designed. They were just endless cor corridors and tunnels with nothing interesting in them other than loot chests and monsters. And that was it. You rarely had anything as interesting as, you know, like a, an actual living area or what was once a living area, you know what I mean? Thankfully in Skyrim, they kind of went back to this sort of philosophy of design where they actually started putting interesting things in there and, you know, started to make their dungeons make sense. I mean, the forts, God, the forts and the Bloodwind, they really took the cake. They were the ones that were really insane in their design. You had this little tiny above-ground tower, and then you had this, what was basically, Der Führer bunker of, under every single one, like this huge network of tunnels running underneath these bloody things. And that makes no sense! Why would you go to all the insane amount of effort when building a fort to build 90% of it underground? Why would you do that? Why would you not just build a bigger fort on the top and put buildings? Buildings are way easier to make than mining out bloody huge caverns and, you know, you know and, and, and tunnels and things. It's ridiculous. It makes no sense whatsoever. Come on, just one more hit. That's all I need. That's all I need. Come on, X. There we go. And for all combat, Morrowind's combat failings, actually. Oh, Unjuicy's unhinging. Awesome. Um, it does add a sense of urgency to it. There is a definite sense of, I could be killed any second. Oh, God, please don't fail me. Skills, you know, random number generator, whatever. That's far more exciting, honestly, than fighting an enemy with who's basically just a damage sponge like a lot of the ones in Oblivion were. Yeah, sure, you swing your thing and you can hit him every single time, but you have to hit him 200 times in order for him to die. Whereas this guy, I only had to get like three good hit hits and he was done. But there was an equal chance that he could get three good hits on me and I'd be killed. So, eh, whatever. It's all personal preference at the end of the day, but... I do prefer it this way. Seriously, all you'd need to do if you were going to like re-release this game is keep the same basic combat system in there, but just pretty it up. Like every time I swing and miss, have him parry me or something. You know, pull a, pull a good countering move or something. Something very flashy. Because that's all that's supposed to represent. You swinging and missing. It's him parrying or dodging. So make it like that. Make him parry and dodge whenever that happens. You know. Yeah, the spawn rates were infuriating as well. I have to admit, like you can, you can walk around the wilderness in this game, depending on which wilderness you're in. It, it, to be fair, um, you know some regions are more dangerous than others, but for the most part, you can walk around without being harassed too much. But in bloody oblivion and Skyrim as well lately, uh, it's like you t it takes t ten steps out of the gates, and then suddenly there's six goblins battling three bears and a dragon. You know. <laughs> You should have picked Ooh, Christ, a oh boy. You're using a shield, are you? Alright. Yeah, he's using his woad ability, isn't he? Didn't save him, it did make it more difficult to kill, admittedly. I wish I'd played this into Orc now. I missed the Berserk ability, that was always hilarious. Cells of Hollow Hand. Have I been here? Not sure I have. Definitely haven't been. Diamond! 
Scrap metal, scrap metal. Old man with a dagger! Okay. No. Maste, Sujama! Oh, Sujama. Oh. I'm so anxious to see if. And nobody spoil it for me, and if you can help it, but I'm really anxious to see if there's Sujama in Dragonborn. <laughs> and I want to see if it has the same effect. Um. Armor's hammer. I don't know, what do we got? Oh, just more cogs. A Dance in the Fire, Chapter 4. Acrobatics increased. Well, that's the other thing in this game. Books were really valuable in this game. Look at that, 150 value. They're worthless in Skyrim. They're like worth five gold unless it's a skill book, and then it's worth fifty. There are books in this game that you can like that are worth like almost a thousand gold, I think, in some cases. Ooh, blue candles. I'm back in Weeping Bell Hall now. Ugh. I need to get to the Hall of Centrifuge, damn it. Went out of this place. Heaven's Gallery, no, that's not it either. Again, our storm. Right, time to get back to Balmora and uh, get our rewards and stuff. Oh, did I loot these? No, I didn't. It's the answer. Holy crap! Hello, Dwarven Dart and Emerald. We're rich. We're filthy rich. Ah. Oh. Yeah, there is no schedule. I pretty much just play it till I get bored. May come back and play it later again. Um, and then once I'm done with that, I, I, I will either pick a game I want to play myself, or I will put up a straw poll and we can vote on what gets played next. So that's the way this is going to work. There are, however, a bunch of games that I will I'm saving for toward the end of the stream and later on and stuff. Um, so they will come later, basically. So I won't necessarily put all the games up for a vote, but I will put some of them up. The armor looks kind of weird at the back. Hmm. Oh, whatever. I might come back to this later, actually, for the simple reason that I, will, I kind of want to do Blood Moon. <laughs> I mean, there's no reason I can't stream Blood Moon another time, but still. I sort of, part of me just wants to do Blood Moon, just because I'm going to be doing Dragonborn soon. As for, I don't know if anyone's asked, but as for the next chapter of Skyrim, that will probably be happening once I get my new computer and get that all set up and get Skyrim reinstalled on that. Um, that's probably, you, but you won't see any more Skyrim videos until then. So that's when Chapter 5 is going to start, basically. Um, once I get all that sorted out, because that I, I really need to just reinstall Skyrim from scratch, because it's just getting, the installation is all kinds of balked, I think. Um, 
So... He has 600 gold again. Awesome, right. In that case... I can finally sell you this moon sugar. Awesome, right. You can have that, you can have this dispel, the chameleon... Resist fire... Lin... Dwarven Dart. Uh, what about these coins? Whoa! Maybe not all the coins then. Mm, yeah. Even less. There we go. Sell a max. There we are. Excellent. Thank you, Revere. Now to the pawnbroker. What the hell? Oh. What are you doing, crazy beetle? Whoa! Oh, the guard came to help me. Thank you, guard. I thought he was attacking me for a second. I was like, what have I done? Attacked your pet beetle, apparently. How did you get in here, beetle? Alright. What else can I sell you? The rest of these coins, I guess. Hmm. Salamax. Offer. Hey, nice. 2,000 gold. Oh. Rich. I'm filthy rich. Um, what else have we got? We can sell. Dance in the fire. Um, that extra coin. Petty soul gem. Oh, I did have a levitate potion. After all that... <sighs> and then these gems, like the rubies and stuff. Okay. We could be sell those too. Hmm. Alchemist lady, I guess? Usually she'd buy the gems, wouldn't she? They're technically alchemy ingredients. So... to you. A healer can tend your wounds. I know! Shut up! Stupid woman. Uh... Have that, have that, have that. You went by the coin. Sad. Sad times. Uh... Right. I got my Dwarven Spear. I'd like to get my Spear skill up a bit before I start using that, though. Because it's only one of my minor skills, I think. Although I could check what level it's at, I suppose. I have all this shalk resin, I'm not using it for anything. Short history of Morrowind. I should read the short history of Morrowind for the benefit of people not playing. Because that's kind of required reading for the main quest at least. I shall read that when we get back to Caius's, I think. Um, yeah, I'll do. Squeeze some more money out of you. Come on. Come on, there we go. You're going to play Kaiser Record Darkest, regular Darkest Hour. They are on the list. They are indeed, so I probably will play them at some point. Um, right, time to go say hello to Hasfat and give him his puzzle box. And then we'll go say hello to Kaius and see what he's got for us next. Hopefully a big pile of money. But I am... Doubtful. And then we should really stop procrastinating and get our asses to Vivek so we can steal this formula. Okay, six house in the Nervine. By the way, the inscriptions on the box seem to be the directions for setting a Dwemer key to open a specific lock. If you're interested, after you've delivered your report to Kairos, come back and maybe I'll have a key you can take back to Argenband. Alright then. 
Sorry, about the sixth house. House Dagoth is the sixth house. The lost sixth house. In the first age, House Dagoth betrayed the other great houses during the War of the First Council and was destroyed for their treason. I can answer any questions you have, but I'll also give you some notes to give to Caius and recommend some sixth house references you should read. Such as... It's a list of books. All of them will be will tell you something about the sixth house and how it ended. The War of the First Council, Saint Nerevar, Nerevar Moon and Star, and the real Nerevar. Good luck finding them, though. The recent events have made these hard to come by. What about Nerevarine, then? The Ashlanders believe a reborn Nerevar will, re will unite the Dunmer against the Outlander invaders and restore the ancient Dark Elven nation. Nerevar is a legendary hero and saint of the temple, but the temple denies the prophecy and persecutes heretics who believe in the Nerevarine. Tell Caius that Shan Gramuzgob would be a better person to ask about the native faiths and superstitions. Alright then. So, hang on a minute, does he teach spear? No. Do you teach spear? Do you want something to do? Yes you do! Awesome! Train me in spear. Incoming dirty comments from the chat, I imagine. <clears throat> I forgot how cheap training was in this game as well, actually. That was quite a lot I just managed to pay for there. So my axe is now 35 and my spear is 28. The spear doesn't actually do as much damage, though, that's the problem. <laughs> Probably attacks faster, though, I imagine. Oh god, like, I need to... Uh... Where's the option in the menus? Uh... Always use best attack, there we go. That'll make things a bit less stressful. And I can just stab with it all the time. Yeah, that does attack a bit faster. Well, hello there. A pleasure to meet you. These notes are from Hasfat and Tabulus. Excellent. I trust you didn't work you too hard for them. I'll look them over in more detail later, but now I have some new orders for you. Oh, really? Already? Um, I've glanced at Hasfat and Tabulus' notes. They cover the Sixth House admirably, but not the Nerevarine cult. Hop on over to the Balmora Mages Guild. Sorry, uh, it's right next to the Balmora Fighters Guild. Get Chandra Musgob to tell you what she knows about the Nerevarine. She'll, pro she'll have some silly errand for you. Do what she asks and report back when she's given you the information. Very smart for an orc. An unhealthy interest in the dark arts, perhaps, but very smart. She's always worried about that the temple will bust in and stick her in a fire. And worried with good reason. This is true. Right, yeah, where's my book? Right, let's... Yeah, sit down, I guess. Um... A Short History of Morrowind by Jeanette Sitter, I think, from the introduction. Led by the legendary prophet Veloth, the ancestors of the Dunmer, exiles from Ultima cultures in present-day Somerset Isle, came to the region of Morrowind. In earliest times, the Dunmer were harassed or dominated by Nord Sea Raiders. Who dominated, eh? Um, <laughs> when the scattered Dunmer tribes consolidated into the predecessors of the modern Great House clans, they threw out the Nord oppressors and successfully resisted further incursions. The ancient ancestor worship of the tribes was in time superseded by the monolithic tribunal Temple Theocracy, and the Dunmer grew into a great nation called Resdane. 
Resdane was the last of the provinces to submit to Tiber Septim. Like Black Marsh, it was never successfully invaded and was peacefully incorporated by treaty into the empire as the province of Morrowind. Almost four centuries after the coming of the Imperial Legions, Morrowind is still occupied by Imperial Legions with a figurehead Imperial King. Though the Empire has reserved most functions of the traditional local government to the ruling councils of the five great houses on Vardenfell district. In th the third era 414, Vardenfell territory, previously a temple preserve under, the, um, under imperial protection, was reorganized as an imperial provincial district. Vardenfell had been maintained as a preserve administrated by the temple since the Treaty of the Armistice. And except for a few great house settlements sanctioned by the temple, Vardenfell was previously uninhabited and undeveloped. When the centuries-old temple ban on trade and settlement of Vardenfell was revoked by King, by the King of Morrowind, a flood of imperial colonists and great house Dunmer came to Vardenfell, expanding old settlements and building new ones. The new district was divided into Redoran, Lalu, Telvani, and temple districts, each separately administered by local house councils or temple priesthoods, and all under the advice and consent of Duke Dren and the district council in Ebenhart. Local law became a mixture of house law and imperial law in house districts, jointly enforced by house guards and legion guards, with temple law and imperial law enforced in the temple district by the ordinators. The temple was still recognized as the majority religion, but worship of the Nine Divines was protected by the legions and encouraged by imperial cult missions. The temple district included the city of Vivek, the fortress of Ghostgate, and all sacred and profane sites, including those blighted areas inside the ghost fence, and all unsettled and wilderness areas on Vardenfell. In practice, this district included all parts of Vardenfell not claimed by... Sorry. Claimed for... Redoran, Lalu, or Talvani districts. The temple stubbornly fought all development in their district and were largely successful. House Lalu, in combination with imperial colonists, embarked on a vigorous campaign of settlement and development. In the decades after reorganization, Balmora and the Escadian Isles regions have grown steadily. Caldera and Pelagiad are completely new settlements, and all legion forts were expanded to accommodate larger garrisons. House Talvani, normally conservative and isolationist, has been surprisingly aggressive in expanding beyond their traditional tower villages. Disregarding the protests of the other houses, the temple, the duke, and the district council, Talvani pioneers have been encroaching on the wild lands reserved to the temple. The Talvani council officially disavows responsibility for these rogue Talvani settlements, but it is an open secret that they are encouraged and supported by ambitious Talvani mage lords. Under pressure from the Temple, Conservative House Redoran has steadfastly resisted expansion in their district. As a result, House Redoran and the Temple are in danger of being politically and economically marginalised by the more aggressive and expansionist Halalu and Telvani interests. Oh, thank God we're on the last page. Uh, <laughs> the Imperial Administration faces many challenges in the Vardenfell district, but the most serious are the Great House rivalries, animosity from the Ashlander nomads, internal conflicts within the, te the temple itself, and the Red Mountain Blight. Struggles between Great House, Temple, and Imperial interests to control Vardenfell's resources could at any time erupt into full-scale war. Ashlanders raid settlements, plunder caravans, and kill foreigners on their wild lands. The temple has unsuccessfully attempted to silence criticism and calls for reform within its ranks. But most serious are the plagues and diseased hosts produced by the Blightstorm sweeping out from Red Mountain. Vardenfell and Old Morrowind have long been menaced by the legendary evils of Dagoth Ur and his ash vampire kin, dwelling beneath Red Mountain. For centuries, the temple has contained this threat within the Ghost Fence, but recently the temple's resources and will have faltered, and the threat from Red Mountain has grown in scale and intensity. If the Ghost Fence should fail and hosts of blighted monsters were to spill out across Vardenfell's towns and villages, the Empire might have no choice but to evacuate Vardenfell district and abandon it to disease and corruption. There you go, that was ten pages of a crash course in Morrowind. Hope you enjoyed it. Ooh, Moon Trigger. Time to rest. Let's go for uh, that many hours. Level 2! Strength. Strength, please, for the love of God, strength. Endurance. 
And... Maybe willpower? Yeah, willpower. <laughs> Omnipotent. Omniscient. Sovereign. <laughs> Immutable. How sweet it is to be a god. Oh yeah, I forgot about those. What can I do for you? Yeah, one of the mods, I can't remember which one, I did dream things, sequences. I, I know the screen was black, it's supposed to be. They didn't actually do any visuals for it, they just did voiceovers. Uh, which are kind of cool, actually. So yeah, we just got crazy visions and stuff. So there we are. Also, hi Barry X. You missed the start, can you? Oh, you... <laughs> Use the twitch wad before my sanity gives way completely. Um, hi, though. Very X inspired me to play Baldur's Gate. He inspired me to play Baldur's Gate too, as a matter of fact. What mods has he got? I've got loads, man. I've got a big compilation set, which is the Morrowind graphics and sounds overhaul. Which is like a big massive compilation basically of all sorts of texture mods and visual mods and graphical mods and a few little gameplay tweaks even here and there. Um, I've got a mod which adds voice dialogue to some of the main quest characters um, and tribunal quest characters. I have a mod called less generic NPC dialogue, which makes the NPCs a little less clunky to talk to. Um, I've got other stuff too. Yes, sir. honestly, I can't remember all of them. I have so many. Um, I obviously have the um, real-time silt stress mod, which you saw earlier if you were here. But if you didn't see it, then you'll probably get to see it soon because I'm on my way to Vivek. So. Um, wait a minute. I didn't rest, did I? I didn't get any... Oh, never mind. We're going to be off fast travelling anyway, so... We'll just rest when we get to Vivek. You know, rent a bed or something. Where would you like to go? I would like to go to Vivek. Off we go. Apparently we're going this way. Should I stop playing Skyrim and play Morrowind? Um, why not play both? <laughs> That's all I can say to that. Question for you, David Morrowind history. Who do you believe killed Nerevar? I'm pretty sure, in my opinion at least, and judged by the Vivek Sermons things, I think, I'm pretty sure Vivek, it's, right, it's weird, I think this is the way it's actually supposed to work, in theory. Basically, Vivek killed Nerevar, but then because he has Kim, or whatever it's called, you know, C-H-I-M, or, or, or something, um, he actually basically altered the universe to make it so that he didn't kill Nerevar, even though he previously did. So he both did and did not kill Nerevar, it's kind of confusing. We're sinking. Hmm, it's raining again. I don't like Mountain the Guaskin tent, but sometimes is it is the best thing to do, Swamp Merchant. I love it when they call me Swamp Merchant. <laughs> uh, oh, there's that little island I mentioned earlier. Oh, look, it has got a... It has got a cave on it. In theory, I believe, I could tell him to stop, yeah, dismount right here or skip the rest of the trip, but... If I dismount right here, he isn't going to wait around. He will bugger off, so... We'll just have to check that out another time.
Chim. Jim. Yeah, <laughs> everyone pronounces it differently. <laughs> What is oh god, I I can't even begin to try and explain what Kim is, uh honestly. There are people who know it about far better than mine. I think me, and I think if I tried to explain it then I would probably just um I'd probably fluff it up and get it wrong. <laughs> hey Sadanine, how you doing? Bet Hriskar's Hiris still in there, like really angry with me because I didn't bring him his money. <laughs> There's Vivek, look, it's over there. You can see it, and you can see Ebonheart too, actually. And a shipwreck. I'll tell you what, actually, this game does look pretty sometimes when you've modded it up. All these shadows and lighting effects and whatnot. It's pretty nice. Do you believe we're nearly there? Valu Canton, that's where we need to go. That's one of the places we need to go anyway. So we need to pinch that formula from someone who I think is in the foreign quarter, and then, if we want to, we can bugger off over to the Lalu bit to get some more jobs from someone who works there. So I probably will do, just because we're in the neighbourhood. And I like money, so... <laughs> I believe that's one of the plantations, I think, isn't it? The Dren plantation? Possibly. Don't mind us just trampling all over your farm. Why did Vivek kill Nerevar though? He doesn't seem like someone who would just do it to achieve godhood. I don't know, man. If you were, you know, tempted with omnipotence and, you know, immortality and omniscience, then, you know, I think a lot of people would do quite a lot to get their hands on that, frankly. And it was out of a mutual thing anyway. It was like the three of them did it, you know. Huh, right. Hi. Welcome to Vivek. Outlander, come to see the sights of the sacred city. To be honest, there's not much to see here unless you go all the way down to the temple. Not that I'm entirely certain it'd be the sort of thing an adventurer like yourself would be interested in. Still, it's worth a trip, if only to say you've been here. Yes, you're in Vivek. Have you been here before? No, I haven't. Could you? No, I have, but I don't come here often. Travel frequently. This is my home. Well, no, I haven't. Could you tell me more about it? Well, the best I can say is that I hope you don't get lost. Stick to the foreign quarter, though, and you'll be all right. I suggest that you find the bookseller and obtain a map of the city at your earliest convenience. You may find it an invaluable resource during your stay here. I know I did when I first arrived. 
Tell me about the foreign quarter. See that building right over the bridge? That's the foreign quarter, the tallest of all the Vex cantons at four levels. The top is where you'll find the guilds in the smith. Don't ask me who, I'm only very rarely up there. I hate heights, and the other cantons are more than tall enough for my liking. Anyway, the next two down contain most of the services you want, particularly if you're looking for a good drink, good company, and a good bed, um, as that's where the Black Shark Corner Club is. Not much below that, although there are still some services in that area. I wouldn't go if I were you, though. There's not a lot of reputable folk down that far. This is about being afraid of heights. I know, I know, a Silt Strider operator who hates heights. They exist, and I'm hardly the first. I've been doing this so long that it doesn't feel so bad if I'm in, at port or in transit. I just look out over the city, preferably at something that's level with my height, or straight ahead towards the horizon. It's not so bad if you look straight ahead, though the swaying motion can get a bit, make it a bit rough at first. Still, that's what harnesses are for. Every strider has them. Right. Cool. Um, Adrina Arefi. She's in the Lalu Canton Waste Works. Good stuff. And... Uh, it doesn't say anything about Orain Freerness or whatever her name is that we're looking for. She shouldn't be too hard to find, though. Ooh, 400 years, really? It says 370 on my screen, but... Oh, I think we can actually go on the little gondola boats as well, if we want to. I'll do that later. We'll get a trip to the Harley Canter and I'll show you that. It's quite fun. Um, however... Right then. Orain Furness. Where you at? That's the Black Shark Corner Club. Isn't there a quest involving a Nordic burial or something in one of these places? Yes, I could have sworn there was. I remember watching Variax do it as part of his interactive Morrowind Let's Play, and I had, I remember watching that. I'd be like, "What the hell?" Because I'd never ever seen that quest before. That was really weird. I had no idea it existed. Um, the waste works maybe up there, but I think we need to go down here. Orain Fronus Apothecary. Uh, sorry, Apothecary, even. Hi. All right, I'm listening. Alchemical formulas. There's a secret. I will not reveal them to you. How about if I give you 100 gold? Nope. <sighs> well. I don't want to do this, but you're gonna make me, aren't you? Yep, you are. I think. There they are, aren't they, on the table? Or in Frenus's recipes. She's looking right at them, though. <laughs> I. Do it. Dirt, 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 dirt everywhere. Dirt. I'm sorry, what? Ha! To the death. Oh dear. Oh, this was a terrible idea. <laughs> oh dear. My victory is at hand. There's my axe. Oh god! Potions. There we go. Whew. So we have a bounty. We have one of 40 gold. That's fine. I'll, I'll go pay that off in a second. Recipes. Great. Gold. Bunch of stuff. Uh, shark resin. Resin. Coat of flowers. Health potions. 
<laughs> oh, and another copy of them. Right, I'll give one to the Lali people and sell the other one then. Oh, Mr. Ordinator, I have a crime I wish to confess to. <laughs> I punched her in the face and did nothing else, I swear. Um. What is this Oh, there you are. Pay gold. There you go. You oh, speak. you kidding? Did I only have to pay 36 gold then, just because of my disposition and personality and stuff? That's kind of cool. I never know realised that was the case. Huh. Now then. Where to begin? Oh. Master's mortar and pestle. Sight the fucking place. Oh yeah. Frost salts, thank you very much. Violet caught Brinus back at home. Trauma roots are always good. Butterfly wings. Oh. Cork bulb. Awesome. Gotta love that cork bulb. Love that stuff. Yeah, again, make health potions with it. Did you have a key for that chest? I am amazed. Really? Ugh, that's annoying. Well, that's trapped as well. Right, this one I reckon I can get open with a scroll. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> uh, Deucey's unhinging. Hey, there we go. More recipes! Excellent! Well, three copies of that now. All the Fifi quests in this game are a bit dumb, though, because there were always bit things like that. It was like... There is an item in a room which I want you to steal. However, there is an NPC straight sat there in the middle of the room. So in order to actually steal it, you either had to kill them, pickpocket them, or you had to do some pull some ridiculous shit where you'd had to force them to look in this direction here, like towards the door, and then you would go into sneak mode and then go around them, and then like then just pinch it off the you know the shelf in a really absurd way. So. Yeah, stealth and thieving in Morrowind is terrible. <laughs> it really is. Um, pound meat. Scuttle karma eggs. Oh my goodness. Slowed soap. I love all the crazy... Ooh, wasp sting. Um, I love all the crazy, like, alchemical ingredients that are in this game as well. So good. Slowed soap. I mean, come on. Isn't that amazing? Awesome. It's like Eye of Newt type shit. Um, alchemical ingredients in the other games are a bit boring by comparison. Although Skyrim does have a few crazy ones like Sabre Cat Eyes and things like that. Um, Falmer Ears, you know. I'm going to need that Sajama, apparently. Uh, do I have any Maztay? You know, just regular old Maztay. No, looks like I'm going to have to use the Sajama. Fine! Squib jelly, shelf resin, slowed soap, vampire dust! 
valuable stuff. I found vampire dust in Skyrim is worth like 25 gold. In this, in this game it's worth 500. Although, to be fair, in this game, vampires are very rare. They're all over the fucking place in Skyrim. So, maybe that does make sense. Alright then, I need to quickly sell this shit before my jammer runs out. <laughs> uh, the upper waist works. Hi. Barter. Will you buy this? Oh no. Crap. <laughs> crap, crap, crap. Will you buy it? Hopefully you will. Yes, she will. No, 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 no. I want to keep one of those. Um. Right, Scorpion Stinger. Let's go through the valuable stuff first. Um. Shalk resin, slowed soap. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Seller gold 150, total sold 1800. <gasps> okay. Maybe not. Definitely not. Fuck it. Ugh. Damn it. Damn it all. You will have, like, no gold. Ah! You're useless. Um. This isn't good. Uh, I'll just mix up some of these ingredients to get rid of them. See, butterfly wings. I had something else that did feather, I swear I did. There it is. Feather. Anything else? Let's levitate. Water walking. Another levitate. Fuck it, let's make a levitate potion. Or three. Hang on a minute. Oh, that's just the right. Okay. Damn. Come on. Levitate. Razor blooms. There we go. Was that it? As far as levitation goes, it was, right. Okay. Um. Pork bowl brutes. Marshmallow. Oh, isn't potion making just so much fun, guys? Paralyze. I'm sure I have something else that does paralyze. Oh, I guess I was mistaken. Never mind. Um... Poison. Green hide does poison. So does wasp sting. Damn. Salt rice with. Oops. Not rat meat. Not resin. Ah, actually, yes, resin. Health potions. I used up a heck of a lot, so. In fact, I'm going to visit the Fighters Guild here in Vivek before we leave, actually, and, uh... Um... Whoops. And get some more potions, actually, I think. Ugh. 205. That might be alright, actually. Okay, so, that's done. Why don't we go and see... Uh... Ugh, what's it called? What's her face? Um... 
Adrino Arefi, or whatever her name is. She's in the Halalu Canton, isn't she? Um, so we can go on a gondola trip, which should be fun. Oh, it's 9 p.m. My goodness. It's getting on a bit, isn't it? Alright then. Gondolas on the complete opposite side of the bloody thing. Ah. Never mind. What's the current donation total? I can check for you in a minute. Hello, Lou, yeah. Travel. No, no, not. No. Uh. Oh, apparently I can't go on a gondola trip, guys. I thought I could. That makes me sad. Never mind. I just thought I thought you could with this mod, but never mind. I could have sworn you could put this. Oh no, that's a separate mod. I have silt striders and boats, but I forgot to install gondolas. Ah, crap. Never mind. Next time, maybe. Alright then, so. It's a shame you can't make scuba <laughs> in this. To be fair. Right, let's see. Edrino Arethi. Where can we find you? Oh, here apparently. This is your house. Is there something I can do for you? No, Danzo, I don't believe we've met. My name is Edrino Arethi. I don't have any official title, but I handle House Lalulu's business here in Vivek. Business. Yes, of course, I need a courier to deliver this sealed report. Take the sealed report to Baron Allen, the clerk of the Halalu Treasury in Rebec Vivek. Okay, cool. Uh, not far from here, just leave my house to go north. The treasury connects to the vaults, the prison, and the records office. Okay. What's the other thing I loved about this game? It had loads of pointless areas like records offices and like, the vaults and things like that, you know. Just because a functioning city would have those sort of things. Uh, who do I need to see? No, not you. Is Oops, that's the prison cells. <laughs> uh, no. Is there something I can do for you? Glass Is there something you need? Let me just check here. Baron Allen, right. Almost, it's like the Dark Elf version of Barry Allen. Yes, Outlander. Ugh, out of the way. Books! Everywhere! Ugh, oh, I can't take them without stealing. Vaults. Mm, do I need to go into the vaults to find this guy? I'm not what sure I do. About? Oh, that was... Oh, crap, I forgot to check. I think that was a police car, though. That time. Guide to Vivek. Is there something I can Look, it even has a map on it and everything. Check it out. Just on the texture. It's nice. It's cool. I like it. Where the bloody hell is Baron Allen? There he is. What do you need? Business. If you want to talk business, talk speak with Crassius Curio or Adrina or Rethi. Oh, Crassius. A splendid mansion in the plaza atop the Plalu Canton can can here in Vivek. I, th I think you mean fabulous mansion, Baron. Um, yeah, I'm here with a sealed report. Yeah. Good, good. You can tell Adrina or Rethi that you delivered it. Sweet. Oh, fetch quests. Or delivery quests, or whatever you, what you want to call it. 
Oh, people think Radiant, uh, the Radiant quests in Skyrim are bad. Oh boy. 90% of the gold quests in this game are just shit like this. Busy work. Yes, Alpander. What do you what want? What do you want? Bloody hell. What do you do? For Spells! Paralyze. Hide. Sotha's grace. Undo his open door. Best spell in the game. I did, did, did deliver it. I'm uh, glad you were able to get a report. Here, take these 50 drakes for your trouble. Well, yeah, I was going to say, 50 drakes? This is nothing to me. But then again, all I did was deliver a letter, so. I need someone to collect a debt from Merudius Fleus. Merudius Fleus owns a. owes a house Lalu noble over 800 drakes in gambling debt. He lives in Hlaoed. Wow, really? Ugh. Go there and get the drakes from him. If he refuses to give you the money, you can kill him. <laughs> okay. But if you get the money, you can keep half of it. Oh, okay. What if I kill him, get the money, and then keep all of it? Hey, okay. How about that? <laughs> right, well, I guess our business here is done. Uh, is there a some manner of... of place I could stay in the Lalu Canton. You know, I mean, like a, like a tavern in Elven Nation's Corner Club. Promising. Looks promising. Hi. Out of my way. Um, hello. You do not rent beds, do you? Bollocks. Is there something I can do for you? Oh, boy. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> All right. Um, I will check on the total because someone said they wanted to know what it was. Oh, time for pub late. Oh my god, it's five o'clock. What the hell? Where did the day go? Oh, still feels like it's the morning for me at the minute. I swear. Ugh. Oh my god, all of the spam. Anyway, oh god, I have 28 emails, and they're all just so-and-so's following you on Twitch. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. Oh, no, I have a comment from a Dragon Age video. I actually have another video of that ready to go up, but... Um, uh, I'll put it up, uh, you can tell you what, I'll put it up on Sunday, um, instead of Skyrim, because there is no Skyrim, because the chapter finished. Um, yeah, I'll put it up then, because I, I, I recorded pretty much the entirety of Lothering um, in one session, thinking that it was about an hour, but it would, turned out it was actually closer to two hours, so I had to split it halfway through, which is why the to be continued on the end of the latest uh, Dragon Age video is a little abrupt. Let's see. Where is there? It is okay. We are sitting on a very, very, very nice, shiny, and much appreciated total. Of six hundred and fourteen pounds eighty pennies. That wow.
<laughs> oh, I got a message on PayPal from a certain person, which made me giggle. Ah, wow, bloody hell. One thing that someone actually suggested, which was really, really awesome, was that we could get, like, uh, l like a laser inscription thing on the side of the new computer with, like, the names of the people who donated on there. Um, which I was actually really excited to try and do. But, um... Uh, unfortunately, CyberPower UK don't do the laser inscriptions. The US branch of them does, but the UK one doesn't. Which is a bloody shame. Frankly. Because that would have been actually really nice. Oh well. Um, right, back to the game, I suppose. Thanks again, everyone. Uh keep saying thanks all the time and it's starting to wear it out wear itself out a bit but I, I just can't stress it enough I guess jeez I'm just I'm still amazed you're all lovely people you're all amazing I love you all and uh, now I need to go search for a bloody bed <laughs> Uh, oh, hello. Okay, we went out the wrong door, but fine, fine. I'm listening. Go ahead. Out of the way. Uh. I could kill them. Alchemist! Brilliant! Will you buy my stuff? You do not have a lot of gold either. Uh. The retort, at least, I guess. And that. Scorpion Stinger. Where's all that slowed soap where it is? Do I know anything else that's vaguely valuable? I could sell it to an alchemist anyway. No, it doesn't look like it. That will do. Just haggle them up a bit. There we go. May awesome. I... That's a bit of carrying capacity reduced. <sighs> okay. Uh, what is this? Pawnbroker. Wow. You've got a lot of stuff, haven't you? Including a limeware platter. Um, barter. Have this coin and some other stuff. Let's fortify luck. Oh, another another copy of Boring Furnaces. Oh, damn it! Really? You don't buy secret recipes? How very dare you! <laughs> rising Force, eh? <laughs> I always thought it was funny they were called Rising Force. Oh, come on. Damn it, woman. Trying to drive me out of business here. There's a certain thing about this for a minute, though. Can I actually, like, make a living as a merchant in this game? Because, like, prices of stuff don't really vary from place to place, so you can't buy something for, you know, a bargain in one place and sell it for a profit in another, in the same way you could in something like Mountain Blade or, or, or Sea Dogs or Sid Meier's Pirates or whatever. Can you, really? Um... There might be a mod to to alleviate that problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, in the vanilla game, I'm pretty sure you can't really play that way, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. Is Could be wrong, of course. Morrowind is nothing if not a game with 
really ridiculous amounts of depth and complexity to it, so... So then we need to get to another canton which actually has a bloody pub. Um, FX eight three twenty, not good enough to buy the eight three fifty. Uh, the difference is probably pretty negligible between the two, to be honest. I currently use the FX8350. It's pretty good. I, I, I kind of always wanted an i7 instead, really, but they are much more expensive. Um, so if you're on a budget, an 8320 or 8350 are pretty darn good, actually. Um... Having eight cores is is very nice. I'll be honest. What is this about? 